All right, everybody, welcome to BO Boys for Monday, April 15th. Fuck it. We're doing our taxes. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. Uh, Clayton, apparently, there's a lot of online chatter right now that we are supposed to eat some crow. And Mm -hmm. uh, will we? Won't we? I don't know. But we had to bring in some reinforcements because the, the Internet's coming after us right now. So joining us on this supposedly crow eating episode from the Kirk Minahan show podcast, Jesus himself, Kirk Minahan is here. Kirk, thanks for joining the BO boys on what could be one of our worst weekends possible. Oof. We'll see, or one of our best. Yeah. It's always great to be here. Of course. Um, I know we got a lot to get to with all the civil war stuff. I do want to say, I mentioned it to you, mm-hmm. Pat offline a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget where I was. When Clayton said that Roadhouse would cry macho if it was released in the theaters, it's one of the defining moments of my life. I actually rewound it two or three times. I, I was so, first of all, correct mm-hmm. and just stunned by the bravery to say that. So I, I know it's a few weeks ago, but I just wanted to, to take a moment and congratulate you, Clayton. That took real guts. Thank you. I'm glad that I could have that effect on you. And it shows that we do have our finger on the pulse most mm-hmm. of the time. So, yeah, listen, it's, yeah, exactly. Look, I'm glad you brought me in because God knows I've taken a lot of heat in social media in my life, a tremendous amount. So I've been there. Um, right. And look, there, there are up days and, you know, this, this, the sun will rise tomorrow. That's how you have to look at it. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, you, you've you had twists and turns in your careers. Yep. I mean, are the B.O. boys going to get fired after this weekend? You know, this this could be that level. You know, is the, the radio station GM going to see what the reactions to our Civil War predictions were? And are we, you know, are we traveling to the next town to find a new gig? I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little vote of confidence right now. I reached out to John from Scranton, the CEO of the Kirk Minahan YouTube channel and said, Mm -hmm. the old boys never leave this channel. Okay. Never, never. never. We've always got that to fall back on. Of course, Mm -hmm. you know, since you've joined, since the last time you've been on the show, yeah, we are now partners on a, on a spinoff series. We have the Kirk exclusives on the sure. Kirk Minahan YouTube channel. Yeah. Unfortunately, and- I don't think anybody jerked off in a theater during civil war. So you might be in some trouble there. Yeah. That that's what we need right now. Yes. We, yeah. We we're really need- war. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, we're going to get into it. I, I think Let's it's time it. we just, we just plow and it. then we deal with the fallout of our mm-hmm. civil war predictions and results. But Clayton, could you give us a Civil War size plow for the weekend of Friday, April 12th? Number one, Civil War, ma- this can't be right, made $25.7 million in its first weekend. Number two, Godzilla X Kong, the collab, made $15.4 million, down 50%. It lost 101 theaters. It's at $157.9 million in its third weekend. Number three, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire made $5.8 million, down 36%. It lost 485 theaters. It's at $96.9 million in its fourth weekend. Number four, Kung Fu Panda 4 made $5.5 million, down only 29%. It lost 294 theaters. It's at $173.6 million in its sixth weekend of release. Number five, Dune Part Two made four point three million dollars, down forty two percent. It lost four hundred and thirty five theaters. It's at two hundred and seventy two point one million dollars in its seventh weekend of release. And quickly, we just got to talk Monkey Man number six, four point one million dollars, down fifty nine percent. It added eight theaters. It's at seventeen point seven in its second weekend. And then Omen, the first Omen. Made seven, I mean, I'm sorry, made $3.7 million mm-hmm. down 55%. No theater change. It's at $14.6 million in its second weekend of release. That's your top seven. Um, I mean, let's get into the top movie this weekend, which is a movie that neither Clayton or I predicted to be the top movie. Civil War, A24's uh, a big budget, $50 million, not $100 million. We'll get to that. But Kirk, 50. I'm going to... Th- gonna throw to you have you seen this movie what was your uh what what was your outlook going into the weekend you know uh, and i know you'll be honest what was your prediction heading into this weekend 
One second. I just got a, I've never been part of this. A group text with Matt Bellany and Lucas Shaw, and they're criticizing you guys. I'm not going to, I want to respond to it. I won't even do it. I'll leave it alone. I won't even touch wow. it. Wow. So, so your buddy, so you guys are all, you're no, all, you're all Pixar dads. No, I'm surprised. I was surprised. I, I would not have said 25 million. Definitely not. I will mm-hmm. say, as a devoted BO boy, I thought, I actually thought you guys were a little low, but I would have never, I was, and when I saw the Friday numbers, I was, I think, were the Friday numbers higher? Then your projection, the actual no, would you have in the low teens? I, I had it at nine million dollars. I mean, I ten said, million on Friday, right? You, yeah. So, you, you, so Friday, you guys you were absolutely porked, huh? When you saw oh, the- it, it was it was bad. When we woke up on Saturday morning, it, the floodgates were open. <laughs> we were getting torched by Saturday morning. My Saturday this is, morning this is, run. This is, this is how you get better. This is how you get better. You know, you learn through this. This, this is part of life. They're, they're all going to be hits. I would have said like 16, 17 million. So I would have been way off as well. This is a yeah. Overperformer. I I actually think that just the title itself brought people to the theater in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has decent. I, I know. I mean, I know you'll talk. I mean, look. Yeah. You, I don't know if you give a review or not. God knows. But I mean, most people. I know a good buddy of mine thought it was pretty good. My buddy Jeff D. Lowe uh, from Barstool is a movie guy. Okay. He liked it. Didn't love it. Right. So I, but, but I do think the audience grade was like a B minus. Right. It, the B audience minus. rate is pretty bad. I mean, yes. B minus unless you're a horror movie where bad. you know it's right. it's real bad. You know, like like all the Marvel movies were basically A's, A minuses. You, you've got to be a B plus or better to to be a decent audience score. Right. So people didn't love this. Why Why don't you guys? Uh, I'm uh, I'll play host here for a moment. Okay. Why don't you guys walk me through the anatomy of a disaster here? You know, one of my favorite movie books. Is mm-hmm. by Stephen Bach. Uh, uh, basically, he was in charge of the studio that made Heaven's Gate, and he oh, went through the entire ordeal of it. So, why, why don't you guys? Oh, the final cut. Through, final cut. Yeah, uh, great, great book. book. Why don't you guys walk me through this? Let's be. I mean, look, it's a bo disaster. These things. Can, these things can happen. So why don't you tell me where it went wrong and, and how we can prevent this from happening again in the future? The, this is almost a reverse Heaven's Gate in that it's a failure for us because the movie did so well, it could collapse Correct. our studio. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's so many why nine things. Million? Why nine million? Here's what I here's what I misunderstood, I think, about this country going into no, this. Good, weekend. good, good. I like this already. And, and so again, I ain't here to eat crow. I'm here to put something on the American people and, and something I, I didn't think of them coming off of Kong X Godzilla, the collab collab, yeah. huge hit, just a, a sensation. I thought that we were a country that was looking to bring people together right now. I thought collab Deadpool X Wolverine collab coming collab. up. I thought we were a collaborative society. I thought we were a society where people wanted to find peace, wanted to find common ground. And it turns out, no, we're a country that wants war. We want Mm. to hate each other. And I I admit it, I thought better going into this weekend of Americans and the North American box office populace. I thought better. And guess what? I was wrong. People want civil war. They want to go to a movie and see their political opposites shooting at them and they could shoot at them. And that's what they wanted. And I guess I didn't think that was the case. I didn't think that would sell. But I I stand corrected. People want to hate each other. They don't want collabs. They want to see the other side uh, get blown up at the box. So so here we go. I guess that's what that's what this that's Mm -hmm. what these people are. And I always hear you guys. I always hear you guys say, I mean, you know. You're always championing more people go to the theaters. In a way, it's a win. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, $25 million worth of box office this weekend uh, to go see this movie. That's better than $9 million. Overall, it's a good thing. Oh, well, it's, it's a good thing that this country is so divided and hates the other side so much <laughs> okay, that they yeah. want to see in IMAX each other blow each other up. It's, it's great. For the box sure. office. I just didn't know that about you're just you're a naive child just sort of dancing. Yeah. As you know, Clayton, he's not of our generation, so he's younger. So that's that, yeah, I mean that, that's gonna happen. Yeah. I can understand that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, he's Gen Y, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. What? Wait, wait, hold um, on. Um <laughs> now mind sliding. Um, I also in Kirk, I think that's a great point. And um, we'll get to the haters. We'll 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 give the the haters voice because oh, we course. think they deserve it. Yeah. But and I even said up. 
and we profit. Well, that's the thing. Here's mm-hmm. here's the rub, and here's the rub in the faces of all the haters who will yeah. get their voice. Is that I said at the end of our episode, if we're wrong, we still win. Because mm. if this movie overperforms or performs better than we thought it was going to, that means that box office is strong, theatrical is strong, IMAX is strong, A24 as a brand is strong. Mm. And therefore, that's more content for us, more theaters and IMAX is opening up. And so it only strengthens our brand. So that's we're the only sort of show you don't see sports commentators being like, you know what? I'm glad I was wrong about that blowout loss. Right. Because there's nothing for them to be because all they hang their hats on is throwing stuff in the air and hoping that it turns out to be correct. covering the spread. Yeah, they got covering cover the spread. spread. Right. Alex for, Jones doesn't want there to be a real moon landing. Exactly. That's right. the thing. So for us, it happened and sure. it didn't. Yeah. Correct. We're happy that this rocket landed on the moon. I'm happy about it. Right. So right. you can't touch me because you're only making this show stronger. Right. Mm. So sure, so like Kirk, it. looking at the overperforming of this opening weekend, you know, there's yes. different factors. Is it the cast? Is Kirsten Dunst a bigger star than we thought? Mm-hmm. Is it the A24 brand? Is it that people wanted to see the opposite political party get blown up in IMAX. Like, what do you think, you know, cause this, the projections we all thought were high and this did higher than the highest projections. So, so what do you think happened here? What's the biggest reason why this did so well? I might be dating myself here again, mm-hmm. but I thought it was a pretty effective trailer. And it was kind of fooling people in the thing. It was almost a quasi action sort of balls to the wall. Like, you know, uh-huh. uh, uh uh, Jesse Plemons with the gun and people running around and things exploding and people jumping right. into cars. And, and I'm telling you, the title Civil War suggests that kind mm. of thing. So I think they, I think they kind of, you know, I, I think, and no, I don't think, I don't think Dunce is going to put anybody in any seats. I don't think that's happening. Mm-hmm. I don't think, and I heard you guys debate Nick Offerman. I don't think so. Uh, uh, Jesse Plemons, no. There was no Ellen mm-hmm. Burstyn in the film, to my knowledge. So no. I saw um, the film. She's not in it, unfortunately. She's not in it. Okay. Well, that's yeah. sad. Um, so I think they just did a good job. I, I thought it was a pretty effective trailer for bringing people to the theater. Like I saw it, the trailer thing. You know, I'm I'm not, I'm actually not a huge fan of of, of Alex Garland, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think they did a good job. I, I think it's going to sink like us. Now you guys are in a tough spot. This is early. Per, you know, week two right. prediction is going to be. I think you might both over index here and make a mistake. I but you know you guys are you guys have integrity. So, but you know. I think that's what it was. I think if you ask somebody on the street, what is this movie? And they saw the trailer. I think they would think, oh, it's like a, and you saw it. I didn't. It felt right. like an action movie. I, was it that or no? It, it is not an action movie. And I think you're totally right. This is a case of, and for some reason, people love this about A24, an A24 trailer that convinces you you're going to see a movie that you're not actually going to see. Yeah, they are good. They've done that so many times, you know, Lamb. Where it's like, this is going to be a horror movie, and it's not a horror movie. It's just a psychological drama. Green Knight is going to be Lord of the Rings, and it's not that. And I agree. They, people thought they were going to get a Stallone-style action epic. And in if they had titled this movie accurately, it would have been called The Morality of Photojournalists. That's and that probably movie. isn't as catchy as Civil War. And I... Yeah, so I, I think that's what happened here. I think you nailed it. They sold people on something that the movie wasn't. Listen, we'll go into it. You brought up, we usually we save this for the weekend preview. You brought up the the second weekend of this and whether we would sort of backtrack to, to cover for our uh, low opening predictions. I think this is the second weekend Morbius drop and I, I'll stick to my guns. Hell yeah. This Same movie's going to, yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna come out here and say, "You guys are right. It overperformed. It's so great. This is the best movie. It's gonna drop twenty percent and make two hundred million. No, this thing's gonna sink like a stone. Weekend two, sixty-eight percent or higher. Second weekend drop. This is gonna be massive Morbius type drop. Once people actually know what this movie is about. Um. Yeah. I mean, Kirk, do you have? You haven't seen it yet. No. What is your interest level in actually seeing it from what you've heard, from what the the 25 million, does that entice you to be part of this moment? Like, mm-hmm. where are you at on actually seeing this movie? I'll say to Clayton, I, I don't, 
you know, I'll probably see it, but I'm, I have, if I never see it, it'll be fine. I do like the fact that it's like an hour 40 or whatever it is, but, Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, it's not. I know Clayton, it doesn't seem like you have any interest in it either, right? No, I have very little interest in this movie. And uh, after Pat, you know, Pat gave a review, a private review, because we're not critics, huh? Uh-huh. And and I have real, really no intention of seeing this movie at all. And we had a friend who was texting us and also dunking on us on Twitter, which, you know, great friends do to each other, I guess, in this right. day and age. Oh, class. And yeah. said that uh, he loved it mm-hmm. and that he thought it was nonpartisan. Which I think is fine if that's what you want to say about this movie. That's great. And a lot of people are saying it's nonpartisan. But the interesting thing about the fact that this movie is nonpartisan is that Post Track actually asked people what their politics were after attending this movie, which I think is a very uh, bad thing to start doing if they're going to start doing. But uh, Deadline is reporting that 22 percent of the people who saw this movie consider themselves liberal 19 percent were democrats 11 considered themselves moderate whereas registered republicans were six percent and and avenger and Ven- i can't even fuck it it's rough feed evangelical christians which i guess is political now six percent right. and conservative folks five percent so i don't know if they were just letting people write stuff in or there were check boxes there but this is a very interesting thing to ask people about a movie that is supposedly nonpartisan. Right. How many people are voting for RFK? Did they have that as a check checkbox? I'm not sure. I mean, there were a few Rogers write-ins though. Okay. So, so that's interesting that it does seem to be political left more uh, over indexing. They are, or not over indexing, but being the, the majority and conservatives being the minority on a movie that most people can't find any partisanness in. I think that comes down to who's like most apt to go see a 24. Yeah. You've seen Alex Garland movie at the, yeah, yeah. that's a coast. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. I think, I think it's more that than anyone thinking like what this movie is going to be about. Uh, I, I agree. I hope this doesn't become the norm of a question that is asked after movies. You know, I don't want that to be a report we get coming out of the fall guy is, Mm -hmm. you know, how many liberals are seeing it versus how many, you know, Trump voters are seeing the fall guy. I just rather not know that. Yeah, Um, I don't think we need that uh, for the fall guy or for minions, maybe for minions. That actually would be interesting to see what these kids are uh, into uh, politically. But but yeah, I, I think for the most part, we kind of don't need that question on the post track. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's get into some of the specific comments that we got. Yeah. I want to hear this. I'm I'm curious about this. Yeah. So I've got, I've got a document here of some of the, the choice ones. Um, I mean, let's just start. We got a YouTuber, uh, uh, at user JP seven T L four Y T seven B. And this is what, what he says or she, or they, uh, cost they. $50 million and is heading toward a $25 million opening. B.O. Boys with their finger on the pulse again. Yeah. A- now, 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 can I say something about this comment? <laughs> I love this comment. This comment tickled me because okay. it was a comment that just very much wasn't overbearing and like yelling at you, was very dismissive, which I think is the best way to get somebody angry. What I would say for this person is you don't have to use your real name, but don't just use a random user generate, like come up with a name that we can call you as opposed to user, blah, 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 blah. Right. Cause not saying your full Christian name, obviously, but there's a cowardice to just generating some random username and saying this, we want to give you your props. We'd like you to comment on all our videos with the same name. So we know who this is. That's all I'm saying. Is there any room here for getting this JT person for a second? And I get hundreds, mm-hmm. thousands of these a week from people. Yeah. yeah. Is there room for some personal inventory from you guys here? Are you digging deep or is this just a, an anomaly, a fluke or the, or do the bio, is the bio boy stew, the magic that puts these numbers together? Is there a flaw in the system or is this just an outlier? 
Well, well, I mean, let's let's talk about that with this next comment yeah, yeah, please, that yes, we yes, got please, please, yeah. uh, from from someone named Nothing to Add. So there you go. Came up with a Great. personal there you go. There you go, Clayton, right? user yeah. handle. Love so it. from Nothing to Add says, LOL. I mean, great way to start any kind like of online uh, comment. LOL, Civil War predictions at $9 million for the weekend. Do you guys track pre-sales at all for making idiotic claims like that? So, you know, uh, nothing to add brings up the pre-sales. At and, its core, a fair question, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it is because that is something that we and maybe different times have not not analyzed enough or, 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 you know, on this, on this weekend, I will say go on the predictions episode, we never brought up pre-sales mm -hmm. and that could be something that in our process where we just, we went with our gut and we're go with our gut guys, you know, we're old school and we went with our gut this weekend. I didn't think that the country was falling apart, but it is. So there you go. We learned that. And I just didn't think that was the case. Sure, and we went with our gut rather than tracking the hard pre-sales for Civil War. So, so Clayton, do you think that is something that Nothing to Add has uh, has said that we should take into account? That that maybe well, we overlook the pre-sales this weekend, or do you well, think Nothing well, to Add use, is bullshit? I'm gonna. Uh, I wouldn't go that strong. I'm gonna mm -hmm. say that you I did can call us somebody... idiots. Yeah, that, that is a little rude. That is a little rude. But what I'll say is uh, I'm not going to stoop to that level. What I'll say is that on deadline, they have a little percentage of walk-up business. And it's 64% of mm. Civil War moviegoers bought tickets same day. Okay? Right. So that's a lot of people buying tickets same day. Mm. And same day tickets aren't pre-sales. So right. yes, I'm going to admit, right? You went nine. I went 13. I'm not going to throw you under the bus as if mine was a great prediction. Okay. Right. But if you're talking a lot of walk up, that means that the pre sales are what they are. And then people walked up to the booth and said, I want to see a civil war because I'm a bloodthirsty maniac and right, I hate right. this country. That's right. probably what they said. I think or so. if they didn't say that, they implied that. It was and so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that in this occasion, the pre-sales didn't matter as much, right? When you look at pre-sales, they can matter a lot, uh, especially when you look at something like Marvel movies and those superhero movies, because they had the stingers and things like that, where we know people were buying ahead of time. The way the, the theaters and movie going has changed now with superhero movies no longer being the force that they are, is that we're not sure what the dominant thing is. We don't know necessarily what's a slam doink anymore. And I think we've done a really good job of forecasting that video games are going to be big and adult animation is going to be big and things like this that we're looking forward towards. And we've been honest about how last year was one of the craziest box office years ever. There was a sea change. We yeah. are captains of a ship in choppy waters. and. If your captain does one little thing wrong that doesn't capsize the ship, right? You're going to throw them overboard. Is that right. what you're going to do? Or are you going right. to follow who's your captains? Who's yeah. driving the, who is driving the fucking boat? We are right. right. So nothing to add. If you want to be a captain, then get your fucking, uh, sail law up and go out on the choppy waters with us. That's what I'll say. It's easy to wow. snipe from at us from onshore. When your feet are on solid ground, that's all I'm saying. That's wow. typical. Nothing to add all the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so th this is a person who's probably left some comments on on Kirk Minahan show no videos. Question. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. So this next one, I mean, this next one is prescriptive here. The, so okay. this next, this next oh. uh, commenter is saying that something is needed. So Bubba, we got this from Bubba. And Bubba said, get the crow ready for these two on their next episode. Brutal takes all around on Civil War last week. None of their takes make sense. And here we go. Shot collars or crow are needed. So, Kirk, mm. you know, we have brought this up on our show, of course, on your historic pay-per-view event yep. last year where you picked mm -hmm. your new producer uh, who has since been fired. Correct. Uh, 
part of his audition to be the producer was allowing you to shock him on stage in front of a live audience. Yep. And we've talked about, do we, the B.O. boys need shot collars? Do we need that as a way of keeping ourselves honest after predictions? So Bubba is saying shot collars are needed. Kirk, well, I have a better idea. The B.O. Okay. boys need shot collars. I have a better idea if that's okay with you guys. Of course. Ties in the Civil War. Um, the film Gettysburg, a Civil War film, which runs, I think, three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to bring in the Sibian for both of you guys. You have to ride it while watching the entire film Gettysburg. I think oh, that's... Wow. Yeah, I think that's really the only appropriate thing at this moment. I mean, just the lesson learned, you know, the, 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 right. that, that, that doesn't happen again. I think, I think it gives you some perspective at that point. With so it, with you, guys are, you guys are allowed an intermission like they had in the theatrical showing. I will, I okay. Will yep. So during the intermission, we get uh, we are allowed to no are these yeah, two Sibian. separate Sibians. I mean, I, yes. yeah, I would, okay. I mean, I would like a dual Sibian where you guys just look, you know, either look at each other or watch the movie at the same time. But right. I, I don't know if that's out there. The Sibian creator, I believe, is dead. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, RIP. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. so that'd be my suggestion, maybe glory, but I would probably say Gettysburg just because of the length of the film. Right. Right. Yeah. It I is, mean, in, it's interesting. You mentioned the Sibian because I, I'm not sure, but Bubba, no. I mean, could this be Bubba, the love sponge? Could he be a fan? And I know oh, Hogan, yeah, obviously right. he was not famous for the Sibian and Howard Stern was famous for the Sibian, but he was at Sirius at a time where the Sibian was being rode a exactly. lot. Yep. Yeah, and and he used to shock the puss. So yeah. I mean, that is something that he used to do. So this is very interesting coming from Bubba the Love Sponge, who I'm assuming this is from. Thank you for being a fan. And I'm a fan of his cinematic work, uh, his videotaping abilities. But sure. otherwise, what I'll say is that you you think that what we did, what we said is is so egregious that we would have to ride a Sibian and, and watch Gettysburg. That, that is what you think we should. Well, do. well, no, I'm, I'm saying if you guys are looking for some sort of cleansing, you know, if you, if you right. feel like you're wrong and you need, you need some sort of punishment, because that's, that's what Bubba suggested. I'm just giving you yes. a suggestion line with Bubba. Uh, you know, if, if, the, if you guys feel like you, you are so wrong that you need to apologize to your fan base, me personally, I, you know, uh, no, no apologize, no explaining to my fan base. They get their show, they shut the fuck up, and then they show up again for the next show. Right. Yeah. And, 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 but, you know, if you guys say, hey, look, you know, uh, then maybe, maybe one of these live shows, maybe down south, maybe down south of the live show in Atlanta, you know, you do Gettysburg, you know, maybe you go to Gettysburg and do it at a live mm -hmm. show. Okay. I, you know, that, I, I'd be, I'd go to that. I'd watch you guys do that. Here you go, Kirk. So, so when you started, uh, what you suggested at first is more of a cleansing, more of a self-punishment. I, I got to say I was ready to resist. But now that it's a a hook to draw an audience for an right. event. Yep. Watch along. A watch along. Ride, the, ride along, if you will. Yeah. Ride along. If yeah. you got a Sibian, bring a Sibian. You know, it's yep. a live theater. We'll put chairs out. But if you could yep. bring a Sibian, mm -hmm. you could sit on that for the yeah. duration of the show. Sure. Yeah. Uh, now I'm into it because now this is a way of the B.O. boys making some money. I'll it's do it. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I, sure. I mean, it's it's I, I, I'm liking this and we'd have to go to Gettysburg. I mean, that's a must. That's where we do this show. That makes sense to me. Now we're making now we're making some money. Yeah. Now, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I I do like that because I don't think we need to get the poison out. I, I do think that <laughs> this is one of those things that. Uh, frustrates me with these commentators is that they said our takes made no sense. And I, I would like clarification as to what made no sense. The fact that this movie has no stars, uh, mm -hmm. which normally means a movie is not going to do well. Right. Uh, the fact that it has a premise that on the surface, you know, seems like it'd be a slam doink. Uh, if you oh. did it in a way that, was you know what the audience expected and it didn't right uh scamming an audience into thinking that it's an action movie when it's not which like you said it's an a24 thing so those things i think made sense at the time to talk about and to worry about now that the expectations didn't meet reality we can talk about why people actually went to see this movie which is something we're also good at doing seeing the facts once they're unraveled and then getting into it. Right. right and we're right. just going to use this information to be better tomorrow. What is this commentator going to do to be better tomorrow? 
They're not going to do anything. Uh, Bubba maybe... is not going to do anything. Bubba's just going to look for another thing to call someone out about. That's what well, Bubba does. Or Bubba, Bubba doesn't learn. Or 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 Bubba, or Bubba is going to join or Bubba us. What? Or, or Bubba, Bubba, Bubba what? Or Bubba is going to join us at the Bo Boys live tour, stopping through Gettysburg, mm-hmm. where we're all going to be riding Sibians, watching Jeff Daniels and Sam Elliott on screen Martin for Sheen, four and a half yeah. hours. Sure. Martin Sheen. I mean, yeah. could we get them to? Because uh, all three of those names I mentioned are live. Yeah. Could we get them to not join us? I mean, listen, they're not going to join us on stage riding Sibians. I don't think Sam Elliott's going to do that. But can we get some retweets? Can we get some sure. Jeff Daniels, especially with the Lebowski, you know, maybe in character as Lebowski, he's mentioned Jeff Bridges, but yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, Jeff Bridges. Oh, my God. Of course. No, Jeff Daniels, uh, right. Uh, Dumb and Dumber, uh, Jeff, Jeff Daniels. No, Bubba's yeah. not going to, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bubba's not going to like that. Bubba is going to be <laughs> the new B.O. Blunder. Right. Uh, yeah. The Twitter the, account. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but can we get some of the stars at Gettysburg to publicize this huge event? Sure. We ride Sibians watching Gettysburg. I, I think they should. That's how you, you exactly. You, you benefit from a mistake and that's all it was. You, 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 know, you just move on the next day. I've done it a million times. I've, I've yeah. screwed up more than anybody. Yeah. yeah and, but- and here you are on the BO boys. Sure. Yeah. Bigger than ever. Yeah, I think so. Um, we got just a couple more that I just want to bring in because this is, you know, this is a, a, a long time wannabe. Oh boy, uh, Chris, uh, is this your worst and most embarrassing BO projection week ever? So, wannabe. Oh boy, Chris Holbrook asked that, and another big wannabe. Oh boy, fan champ, sir, uh, says, uh, y'all need a fact checker or ask before the show, Christopher. So, so, so he's bringing in Christopher. So. Champs are almost looking, and we had Christopher on last week as our co-host. Yeah, um, I, it's uh, it's almost like now you're getting the calls from people like Champs. Are, is do they want new blood? Do they want the young generation? So I mean, is this a situation now where we've got to put our foot down on Christopher to respond even harder to keep him out? I mean, do you suggest that, Kurt? Do we get rid of Christopher because now he's sort of a threat to our empire? Well, I'll just say this about uh, Christopher, who I like. I listened obviously last mm-hmm. week to the entire episode. Did Christopher reach out to you guys and say, oh, by the way, the kids are talking about this movie. Like the kids are talking all, they, they, you know, he should be giving you a little pre, you know, uh, uh, projection. He should be helping you out. If the kids, he's, he's on the campus right now. He's doing the drugs. He's, you know, right. The, are they talking about civil war? Are they making civil war jokes. They, they the Jesse Plemons. Like what's going on? Was he, was he a benefit at all? You know, he sent us and I'm bringing it up now. He sent us a text over the weekend of his screening of Civil War, and mm-hmm. I'm just gonna get get this in the camera here. Sent oh. this, you've seen it. Empty yeah, screening. Empty. So hold so, on. I I need to clarify. I need to clarify yeah. this. He yeah, just clarify. sent us this. He just can't just say this weekend. He just sent this uh, Sunday today. Night. Today. Oh, today. Sunday. And, oh, and, which and is part of the weekend. Part of the weekend. But, but this isn't to throw Christopher under the oh, bus. Oh no, no. Hold no. on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is to I say. Could that people may have already turned on this movie because by Sunday right. night we have oh, empty theaters. Now, Christopher went on this show and he did say that nobody he knew at his campus was talking about this movie and was interested in this movie. Now mm-hmm. I think Christopher hangs out with some cool dudes who like to smash uh, beers and, yeah. you know, do all and that fun smash, stuff. Yeah. And smash. I was gonna say because we're not on the network. This isn't a Kirk exclusive. That no, we no, got to yeah. keep the kasha tape on a little bit. But I sure. was thinking it, and they don't got time for this sort of hate mongering. They want to live their life to the fullest. They want to have fun. They want to party. Okay, and mm-hmm. and also get their work done and be a great intern and be a great producer for somebody someday. Just to keep and, that in yeah. mind, Kirk. And give, and give blood, right? As well, I think you said last week. Yeah, he gives blood. I mean, this kid, what does this kid not do? So he is not a guy that we're going to throw under the bus. And I will say, Jack, on our uh, on our sub stack, who you have to follow, he said 21. He He was in line. We went against. Yeah, we called him out. We called him out. I did. Yeah. 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 So the, the this is on us. If it's on anybody. This is not on Jack. This is not on Christopher. So you all need to know that, right? Well, yeah, We're not yeah. going to throw this on our underlings, even though that could be for funny content. We're not going to do that. Those mm-hmm. are good boys. 
And uh, and we, we love them both. I will say that. And I, I mean, I never even speak to Jack or I've, I've seen Jack once in my life, but I love him like a son. Right. Uh, right. It's how I'm going to treat my real son. But the thing is, is that I think that we got and I don't think because we did. We got a email from ha Javier. Um, Pat, do you remember this? We haven't read this email, but he did at Wake Forest. He was the gentleman who went on stage. Kirk, I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember this. He went on stage at a talent show and asked the audience for a movie and then gave the opening day yes, numbers yeah. for those movies. Yeah. And he was just swarmed by co-eds after this. Oh, yeah. Sure, now, swimming. Sent, yeah. He yeah. sent us an email about these movies that are coming out in April. April. Pat, have you he sent this, this on March? I have this. So he said this on March 30th. He did this again where he surveyed uh fellow college students had had check boxes next to all these movie names and he said the results were interesting monkey man had the most check marks challenger came in a close second abigail and civil war were both tied uh so it seems like monkey man and especially challenger have breakout potential we saw monkey man didn't um so I guess the Civil War came in tied for third amongst those movies with Abigail. And so that was something that even though we didn't read that email until now, we took that in. Yeah, we took that in. And so we took what Christopher said. We took what what uh, Javier said. And we thought this movie is just not going to do well. We just thought that. Did we go <laughs> low? Yeah, we went a little bit low. But, you know, also it got engagement. I mean. That's what you want. You want engagement. I mean, yeah. not to pull the curtain back, but guys, you're engaging with us. Yeah. It it riled you up. Clicks. It got the masses riled up, yeah. right? And we've made enough great predictions, and we will make great predictions in the future, that you can still trust us, okay? Like we said, right. we're captaining the ship. So, Kirk, uh, just to close the loop here on Civil War, you know, yeah. we talked about how I think this is going to be more be a situation. Clayton mm -hmm. still sticks to this is not. Where do you think this movie is going to go? Like, do you do you think do you feel a sensation here? Do you feel no. like this is a movie that opens at twenty five and we're going to be seeing it making a hundred domestic? Nope. Or no, no, yeah. no, 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 nope, nope. I don't think it makes fifty domestic. Wow. Nope. I, no, I don't, I don't think it smells fifty domestic. I, I mm -hmm. don't. Um. Well, let me. I have one other question because. Of you know, the first time I got suspended in my old radio, I got suspended five or six times in the old days in radio. I was a bad mm -hmm. boy. Mm -hmm. um, I made, I was, I had a week off suspended. I went to my home in Maine and like Richard Nixon himself made a list of enemies, friends of mine who didn't step up and have my back. Right. Um, I'm wondering, cause you referenced a friend earlier. Is there somebody who, after this, this whole thing is done, you're like, you know what? Dead. Never speaking to this person again. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say his, I'll say his name. Say wanna be oh boy Joshua. Oh. He he texted and tweeted the no, same no, thing, no. which is Clayton before this weekend. And then he said, and then it was a picture, a meme of Axel Rose sure. saying, I don't need your civil war. And he both put that on Twitter and he texted it to the both of us. <sighs> mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this is this is a very talented person. Who, yep. who has a book coming out that we were going to full on promote? Just, yeah. just it was going to be shameless when this book came out. The Bo Boys were going to stump for it. Mm -hmm. You know, we probably were going to throw it on the merch tables at the Bo Boys Live Tour in the fall. Yeah, and uh, and we'd be naming yeah. that book right now. Insert title here if we right. were still going to do that. Am I right. smelling? A, am I smelling a book burning party, guys? I mean, I don't want you know, I don't want to go all footloose here, but do I? Is that the smell of books burning in the air? Here's what I'll I'll go as far as a book tearing possibly. Okay. I'll okay, tear sure. I'll tear some pages. I'll tear key pages out of this book Oof. so that it's even worse because people right. will read it and be so it's angry because key pages mm -hmm. won't be there. That's good. Uh, That's even better. Yeah. yeah. Good. I like that. All right. Good. 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 Yeah. So th but that yeah, long way of saying second week I think tanks. I don't think it gets to fifty. I think it's going to be. Well, I'll let you guys handle it, but low, low, low second weekend, and then gone, just wiped out from existence. It, people yeah. don't even talk about it now. Like it's not, it's it's not a buzzy. Like you know, I thought there was a chance to be a movie that ignites some conversation, given the subject matter, given the title, given whatever. But nothing. I've heard, I've heard nothing about it really.
Right. Like this this is a if this movie were successful in being provocative, this would be a movie that would be a huge segment. Maybe it would be the full two hours. You get two hours out of this on the Kirk Minahan show. Could be. Are you guys gonna go argue about civil war? You know, is your hmm. is your producer Jack, is that on the rundown where no. it's like we've uh, we gotta debate they, civil war? They brought it up tonight, but as usual, they're like, Did, did you see Civil War? Oh no, I haven't seen it. You guys, they brought it up. No, no, and that was kind of the length of the the, the, the triple no. And Bly Mike mm-hmm. goes into it never goes in the movie. So no, right. I'm trying. No, it's not one of those movies that you know opens at 25 and then kind of legs its way to 75 or 80, even you know, and is right. kind of around for a few months. That's that's not even a movie that came out a year ago, just about right now, that had conversation going for a few weeks was Air. Yeah, like it's 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 not that that kind of even even that not not even near that. Right. Well, I want to throw out a, a couple of movies for before we let you go that are coming out to see if I, I think this is a movie that could be uh, what Civil War wanted to be in terms of generating buzz. Kirk, where is your excitement level for Challengers starring Zendaya? You know, weeks out. Is that going to be something where? The Kirk Minahan show is going to be covering this film. You know, maybe, I mean, I, I, I've been emailing with, with your producer, Jack. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's great at getting our videos up on time on the Kirk yeah. Minahan YouTube channel. Is he working on getting Zendaya into the studio to promote challengers? I, yeah, I think we probably reached out and I guess she's not going to be here. I, okay. I, I mean, I'm interested in seeing it. It seems like it definitely is a buzzworthy scene or two for sure. That's going to get the, the barstool mm-hmm. guys talking. Yeah. Um, She's a star. You know, you know me. I'm, I'm hesitant to call people stars. You guys are quicker to call people stars than me, but I think she's a star now for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this will open bigger than people would have thought like four or five months ago. Yeah. And I do want to see it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how this goes. It might stink. I have no idea. But yes, I will see that movie in the theater. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, this, this is the one. Here's what I'll say. This is the one where Clayton... The, when we're doing the prediction show for challengers, I do think we got to be really buttoned up in terms of analyzing the numbers, uh, going on, you know, our gut, which has worked for us for, for our entire lives, gotten us where we are. But, but Mm -hmm. I think really being ready with that one, because we've talked a lot about challengers and we don't want to fall into the opposite of the civil war trap where we go in a direction that's pure gut. So I mm-hmm. think that's a big episode for us. That what is the Scott, what is, is big. I'm sorry. What does Scott Mendelson call it when it's sort of a a movie that's sort of we overrate because of Twitter, how successful it's going to do? He has some phrase for that. I've heard him say it before. Where Twitter really thinks it's going to be the biggest thing in the world, but it doesn't land. I'm, I am a little worried about that. Mm-hmm. that is, it, is it like a coastal Twitter? Right. Snakes on a plane situation. A phenomenon more than... Are people in North Dakota and in Effingham, Illinois, going to go see it? I, yeah, I, I is she a star there? I don't know. Right. Yeah, we 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 say tw- tweets aren't ticks. I mean, tweets that's what t- we that's say. A, yeah, that's, oh, yes. so that's a Bo Boys original, actually. Uh, right. We came up that. with that one. Knew that. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, I I agree with you, Pat. I mean, I think this is something that we we have a strong feeling for, and I do think yeah, we'll look at those pre-sales. Yeah. We're going to have to make sure Jack looks at the pre-sales and sends us a detailed email beforehand. That's That we can guarantee. Jack will work his ass off on Challengers Week and get mm-hmm. us those numbers. Yeah, we can guarantee that. The Fall Guy, Kirk. So this movie, Ryan Gosling, and he was on SNL last night promoting the hell out of this movie. Like They want this to be huge. You know, There's no Marvel movie kicking off the summer. This is the summer kickoff. They want this to be a gigantic movie. It's based on a TV show that ran five years in the eighties. Yep. Um, what did what did, what are you feeling on this? And were you a Fall Guy guy in the early eighties? Was that a big show for you well, as a young young Kirk Minahan? What a millennial people, question! What a millennial I mean, really, question to ask! Come on, the, 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 do were you into the Fall Guy? Of course. I mean, you know, I mean, if, uh, I will say the late Peter Minahan. My father was a big fan of the program, so I would watch it with him. And, you know, Pat, you wouldn't understand this, but mm-hmm. there were times where I have to go up and actually change the channel on the TV with my hand. You've always had five, 600 channels. 
mm-hmm. you know, Disney, uh, this, da, 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 you know, Hannah Montana. That's who you grew up with. But for guys like me, Clay, Clarissa explains yeah. it all. That's my, that's <laughs> my, that's mine. Not Hannah Montana. Clarissa um, explains it all. I'm not sure how much the title means. Um, it's another one where I, I don't know. Like, let's just, let's say it's not very good. Does right. it still make, is it still huge or does it have to be great to, to kill it this summer? I love a big opening weekend. Gosling's another guy who I think I, I will fully admit now I can, I can put him in the star category. Mm-hmm. No question about it. I, I actually think the moment he became in my mind, like a no doubt star star was at the Oscars this year. Yeah. Like, that was, yeah. he crossed over. And we, I know we've covered this in the past. It's still one of the biggest no. disgraces of all time. that Tina Turner closed out the in memoriam, all due respect, but that's a different conversation. Yeah. Um, but Gosling's a star. Uh, uh, and I, I, you know, Emily Blunt is, is been in big movies. So yeah, I think, I think it's going to do really well. If it's pretty good, I think it'll do mm-hmm. really well. I, do I think it's going to like, do I think the trailer is very funny? Not really. It's kind of der- like, it's the joke star, but it doesn't matter. Like it's, it's, I, I think that's going to hit. And I think audiences want to see movies like that this summer. They want to see two good looking people and kind of a goofy, funny action comedy. And they're promoting it pretty well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be a big hit. Yeah. Uh, th- there is a chance that it's terrible, and I, yes. I agree. The opening weekend that won't matter, but that's a difference between that just being, you know, Clayton and I. We talked about this uh, in the at the water cooler. Is this just bullet train where it makes like 110 domestic total, right. or is this something that does make 250 million plus domestic because it's good and it's like the big movie of May? And I, and and I think that's we don't know. This could be so bad. That it's an opening weekend and then and then that's it. Yeah. But that that's not what the buzz is. And I, I think yeah, Kirk, you really hit it. You really hit it too, is that this is coming off of really Gosling being coronated as a legitimate star. The thing that we've been waiting for him to become for so many years, the thing that Jake Gyllenhaal never became and never will become right. at this point. Where yes, the Oscars made him that household sort of anybody who didn't know who he was, was like, who was this guy who charmed us all had a great SNL last night, which means a lot. And this is the movie. This is the time for him. So if he's going to be a star and a movie's going to be a hit, this is the one, this is the one. Are you guys ready to say that, that Ryan Gosling is a bigger star than Logan Paul? Uh, uh, Bigger, bigger movie star. Mm. I, I'm Biggie, comfortable yeah. saying bigger okay. movie star. Okay. Bigger movie star. Because uh, Logan Paul hasn't gotten the the shots yet. You know, right. have this conversation yet. five years from now. I think it'll be different. Sure, but yeah, he right now movie, he could be he could be like the guy who wants to be Gosling in that movie. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, like yeah, like the dumb, like he, he's even dumber than the dumb Gosling. That would yeah. work. Hey, Kirk, here's what I'm going to pitch for the stinger of this movie, which has already mm-hmm. been shot and will not happen. Is that we see an action sequence. We see somebody who looks sort of like Gosling going through doing all this crazy stuff. And then Gosling is actually the director of this movie and he calls cut and who is playing him in the movie of the events of this movie. Exactly. It is Logan Paul. Like James Brolin playing Pee Wee. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And that's a reference we would get at. Yeah. Pee Wee was like a very famous uh, comedian and, and, and television star for kids. I, uh, I I remember, I remember his describe. I remember all the Pee Wee jokes. We remember his Netflix series. There was a couple of years ago. Sure. You watched Mm -hmm. that. Yeah. 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 That's how you know. I'm sure. So uh, if fall guy does open huge, is there room then for other, you know, is there a Jake and the Fat Man movie that <laughs> we'll see good. in a year? Is there a, a heart to heart? A dynasty movie? movie? Yeah, I don't know. Is there, yeah, like what are the big 80s? You know, we've seen the A team and, uh, you know, the, the Miami Vice has already been a movie. But yeah. what is well, I have... feel like Jake and the Fat Man is like that kind of recognizable IP that you could just take wherever you want with sure. it. Sure, Remington Steel, maybe. Yeah, I mean there are, there yeah. are uh, yeah there are definitely ones out there, and if this one's a big hit, you will see about six of those over the next four years. So I think ready. yeah, I think that that time that early '80s or late '70s, where it was like you know '81 to '87, those mm-hmm. sort of shows there where you had Simon and Simon is ripe for a remake. Hardcastle and McCormick could mm-hmm. could be something that they could do. 
And uh, yeah, I think if this movie is a hit, it's a fertile ground that hasn't really been plowed. Airwolf. Has there been an Airwolf movie? Oh, I mean, these right. are things that, that could be made. And if this is a hit, will be made. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. Magnum PI has not been made into a film, right? TV no. show, yeah. They CBS redid it, right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there you go. Yeah, there's been a lot of like, I think something like Hawaii Five O. I feel like has had three or four reboots on television in it's just had the at last least, ten at years. At least three, yeah, yeah. But I, I definitely think you know, with the superheroes on the wane, it's time to revive that sort of TV remake. Uh, but it's all, it's all landing on the Fall Guy because if that's a hit, then I think we're gonna get our Hunter movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Finally, oh, my man Fred Dreyer. I'm in for that. Yeah. No yeah. question. Yeah. The um, that, I think it was t- I think guys have talked about this the last couple of weeks. So Ghostbusters will probably make a hundred, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does, yeah. That, does, that, does that do any like? If I said to you right now, will they make another? I know you've talked about this, but right of this current iteration, will there drag out another one? Is is the return enough to justify another movie, or or are we finally done with this really terrible franchise that's produced? I would say three quarters of a good movie of a great yes. movie. Yes. It, it's uh, it's in the worst kind of spot right now because it's going to end up finishing, you know, right now it is at uh, 96.9. So 97 million domestic. That's, it just made, worldwide. that's not a lot. It's it's, I mean, it's, it's not ever been a huge international franchise. It's a, True. it's a movie that started as an SNL sketch comedy movie. You know, that's mm-hmm. really what the first one was. It's not a giant international action franchise. So it's going to end up making like 105 to 110 domestic. That's kind of the absolute war zone. If this movie made 80 million domestic, then you know it's dead. Right. If right. it made 150 or 160 domestic, then you know you got a sequel. It's just in that gray zone of everyone just hammering and what do we do? And Paul and, and Paul Rudd is begging for them not to do it, right? He doesn't want to do this again. Does he? I, he doesn't want to do a third one of this, does I can't imagine. I mean, it's got to be just a paycheck for him. Yeah, I guess. So, I, mean, so, I know my man Dan Aykroyd's dying for it, but other than that, mm-hmm. who wants it? That's the thing. It's Dan Aykroyd. And how much do frantic 3 a.m. phone calls from Dan Aykroyd mean to the head of Sony Studios? Right. Yeah. Right. I think the thing with Paul Rudd is that he doesn't want to be in a truly abysmal one of these right. because he's recovered from Ant Man. We still like him. Right. And he did this movie, which did fine. But I think if he ends up starring in another big budget sort of flop that kills a franchise, that would be not good for him. So if he could stay after this one and say, you know what, guys, I'm good. And, you know, that's a big budget cut. So uh, the re- the way they make this movie, and I've said this, is the budget increased for this one and the budget is too high uh, for this franchise for how many people want to see it. So you got to cut yeah. the budget somehow. Yep. I said, get rid of the youngins because nobody cares. Everybody else is saying get rid of the oldsters because that's where the money is actually being spent. But I don't think anybody cares about the youngsters. So I think this is a dead franchise at the theater. I've called that they're going to make a, you know, streaming show with Ernie Hudson as the I star. I heard you say that. Who looks great. That's yeah. that's my call. And mm-hmm. I think you could get Annie Potts back. And that's what they're going to do with this. They get the bad guy who's back in this one. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Did, did Harry Minahan have any interest in this Ghostbusters movie? Oh, he said to me, I said, Harry, do you want me to go? Because we watched the last one at home we didn't go to the theater he kind of liked it mm-hmm. he remembered podcast but oh, then he yeah. said uh he said dad i just have no interest in seeing it it was kind of like wow. his reaction to um uh Taria ripley and um uh, becky lynch he just kind of was like ah, we can fast forward through this right that wow kinda, he's yeah. not there yet give this kid yeah. a couple of years he's yeah, Rhea Ripley will yeah. make a man out of him at some point i suspect yeah. but yeah he's yeah. he was not he wasn't feeling it no um and yeah, he had no interest in Civil War. Uh, I'm trying to think. The, there's not been a big Harry Minahan movie at all lately. The kids have been talking about that that age. No, nothing lately. So the collab wasn't big with Harry and his. Gang. No, not really. They, no, that that's not the Godzilla crew. But uh, but no, yeah, nothing. 
nothing really this summer. They it's interesting. He's totally moved on from Marvel. It is interesting. Like he was very into it. Right. Yeah. Doesn't care about it. Thinks it's dead now. So he likes horror. So they're kind of waiting for that next kind of underground horror movie to come out. Right. Oh, Terrifier three. Terrifier three. I mean, yeah. yep. it's true. He'll be yep. a little bit older. He'll be six months older by then. So I yeah, think he'll be ready for Terrifier three. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I, I think uh that that sort of wraps it up as far as uh movie talk here, and uh you know. We're teasing, of course. We've got the the fall tour. So just put it out there, Kirk. We are working on dates for Boston mm -hmm. uh, in the fall. Uh, we're thinking around the time of the release of Gladiator 2. Yes. So uh, you know, listen, if you're if we'll we we'll work on it, I'm sure that there's a there's a lot of uh things to figure out there. But of course. We'd love to have Kirk Minahan on the I'll be there. live tour. Wow. I, 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 this guy you had on last week who I like, this guy was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go 20 minutes to go to your show. I forget. Yeah. Who, that was um, the ace Eric the Weber. Ace Eric Weber. The ace, I mean, Eric, come on. The B.O. boys. I, I will crawl 20 miles to go to this live show for you guys. So I podcast Jesus will be in attendance at the B.O. boys. If I'm alive, uh, I'll be there. Wow. So that is, that is our goal. We got to keep podcast Jesus alive uh, until yeah. November. And yeah. you're out there. You're running every day. You're you're. I'll be, uh, I will be 50 years old October 31st. So I will be 50 years old for the show in November. Wow! wow. Huge milestone. We got to have a giant cake. Pat will be 50 and 22, 20. I mean, you're you know you're 20 years away, Pat. But it, it's going to happen eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what? And we'll all be there celebrating that. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I want a Hannah Montana cake. I figured you would. There we go. Embrace it, Pat. Embrace your millennialness. When you put it that way, that I'm going to be so young for so long, then it That's starts true. to feel like. Well. Yeah. Sure. But I'll be there. Are you, guys, are you guys circling potential venues? We're circling yes. potential venues. Also, so, bidding, uh, bidding must be like for the Olympics. I mean, people must be. I can't even imagine the frenzy around this thing. Right. Yeah. We want, we want a guaranteed payday from the venue because we're bringing in oh. tourism. We're bringing in, you yeah, know, the hotels play, are going to be booked out. Yeah. Yes. Well, that was, this happened, this happened to, to, we were, I did a live show in Portland uh, a couple of weeks ago and yeah, the hotel was filled with men fans. They were walking on the streets. You saw the sweatshirts. So yeah, you could say to these guys, Hey, we're going to bring in, you know, 20 million, $30 million worth of revenue yeah. over this weekend. Like, what do we get? Do we get a private plane? Right. We get a rider, obviously. We get, you know, we want primo dates. We want, we want to get, basically pay us like it's sold out before you even put the tickets out. Just give exactly. us that. Yeah, you got to do that. There has yeah, been some talk of actually erecting a new venue for this. Yeah. Just because we mm. wanted to have our certain specifications. Sure. So, you know, along with that. And of course, the taxpayers of the of the city are going to pay for that. Yeah, that. yeah, that, yeah that, they're going to foot the bill. Yeah, but I'm the money we bring in is going to be way more than that. No yeah. question. No and question. then they use that venue for years to come, bring in Bruce, bring in the strokes, all the big acts. So it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so Kirk, anything that you want to promote to the wannabe O boys, wannabe O girls, wannabe O people that's people. happening on the Kirk people. Minahan show. No, we're kind of, it's, it's kind of a nice quiet. We just did the live show, um, which we put a lot of work into. So now it's just kind of the show itself for the next few months. And then we're going to kind of, Figure out what's going forward. I think after the summer, you know, what kind of show will be the show uh, for the next three or four months, get through the summer, then figure things out in the fall. But uh, I know we have the YouTube channel. We're very happy to have you guys be a part of it. Um, but yeah, no, we're just we're just chugging along. Great. Well, of course, you could watch the B.O. Boys Kirk exclusive on the Kirk Minahan YouTube network. And of course, the caution tape is fully off on that channel. Oh Anything God, goes. Anything goes there. Email us the B.O. Boys podcast at gmail.com. We love getting your emails. We love getting your added tweets. We love getting your YouTube comments. Bring it on the B.O. Boys podcast at gmail.com at the B.O. Boys pod on social media, the B.O. Boys YouTube channel. Drop the comments in there. Bubba, we love you, Bubba. Keep coming back. Keep, monet keep monetizing yourself by bringing up the engagement and uh, five stars on Apple Podcasts and all that. Final, and, final, final thing I will say of the cast yeah. members of cast members of Gettysburg, I think there's a chance you could get Tom Berenger at the live mm. show. Wow. Do you incredible. think get Woody him ride. on stage? Woody ride. Yeah. <sighs> Woody ride. He might he he might be the position of his crew where he might ride the Sibian. He might do it. Wow. Tommy wow. takes the ride. Yeah, he might yeah. do it. I'm just saying. And, and you know what? It would pay off a guarantee next day he's getting offers without oh. auditions. I mean, yeah. the now, now, 
Can, can I pitch a show really quick? And I know we're at the end of the show, but you know, I was watching the Conan hot ones uh, at all time. I mean, Conan O'Brien all time are one of the funniest living people just destroyed that show. I mean, that show now is ha- they have to end the show because he just went in there and wrecked that show in such a great way. Now, is there a show for the Kirk Minahan uh, YouTube network where you you're riding the Sibian and getting questions. I mean, I know it's a Howard Stern thing and he did sure. it, but like it was Howard. more Howard. with Howard. that. It was more, it was more about um, getting a woman to uh, get off. This right. would be, we would have all different guests and every, we would just turn it up a different notch mm-hmm. after every mm-hmm. question. And it's just somebody riding the Sibian in a hot one style. Right. And they don't have to come to completion or anything like that. But I think that'd be an interesting show. I don't know. Is there anything there? I mean, sure. We're open to all ideas. If you want to pitch that to our to our producers, we're we're not opposed to that. We could I'm sure we could dig up a Sibian, I would think, right? I mean, they don't use it, they don't use it for CERN anymore. We could probably get it from him. No, if if I could get Tom Berenger to be the first guest on this show, just Mm -hmm. shoot a pilot. Is that something that you would be interested in? That's greenlit right away. That's a, that's an okay. automatic green light. There's no no tape at all. Right right to production. Okay. Wow, yeah. this is uh, huge. Uh, great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. I mean, listen, Clayton, after that successful pitch of, here, yeah. uh, of the Sibian ones, so uh there's nothing left to say. Nothing. Oh, we're on we're on no other platforms. Um nothing left to say. Except for until next time. Will Will smell. smell.